Hey guys, Crixley here, Editor-in-Chief with GirlGamer.com, and today I am here at the Downtown Independent Theater in Los Angeles, California for the Classic Tetris World Championship. So we have a three-hour quarterfinal, which will be boiled down to eight competitors, and then going down to two competitors and a head-to-head -head for a grand prize of $1,000 in bragging rights to be the first ever official Classic Tetris World Champion. It's going to get intense and heavy, folks. Let's see what happens. The Tetris, classic Tetris World Championship has ended, but for being the top female finisher, she did win $250 courtesy of GirlGamer.com. Now, out of eight competitors, there was you and another female. So how does it feel to know that you're, you're kind of in a quote-unquote boys club, but you're kicking their ass just like you're one of the guys? Uh, you know, I, I don't expect anything special for being a girl, but it does feel good to be better at Tetris than girls and guys alike, I guess. It was... Um more intense, I think, than any of us expected it to be, guys included. I just actually learned how to play with the second button on the controller, which was a big breakthrough for me. I think we held our own for the most part, considering it was the first one, and we had two females up there, and I have no doubt that one of us is going to make it to the finals next year, because uh, she's learned about that B button now, and she's a force to be reckoned with. My goal is to max out the score, so um, that's where I'm headed. Dude, first of all, I got to say that final, that second final of the, uh, the second round of the final, right. I was having a heart attack for you because I thought, oh my God, what is he doing? What is he doing? So when stuff like that happens, like, how do you calm yourself down? Um, that's kind of my style, actually. I continually put myself into harm's way uh, with, the, with the way I play and just try to get myself out. And, and that's kind of, that's kind of what I did. I'm used to that. But uh, the, the crowd element was really the fun part. Um, it took my mind actually off the Tetris and I think it actually helped me play better. Well now I had noticed that your competitor, uh, Harry, was wearing earphones while you weren't. So you were really hearing the brunt of the crowd. So how do you block that out? Oh, I don't block it out. I absolutely took it in. Um, it was, it's the experience. I mean, you, you don't want to drown out an experience like this. You want to savor it and I really drank it in. Now, when did your love affair with Tetris start? Uh, I got a Game Boy in 89 right when they came out. Uh, it was my only game system. I didn't have a Nintendo or anything like that. And uh, Tetris came with it, so I just started playing right then. I actually participated in a small part in the 1990 Nintendo World Championships. I got to the semifinals in um, Universal Studios, a uh, kind of freak occurrence and whatnot. So I had actually been playing Tetris before then and found out that I was pretty decent at it by qualifying for the semifinals. Everybody knows how to play Tetris, and there's just a certain way it's designed and certain ways that it work that um, it's very easy to pick up, but there's depth to it. And where you put the pieces, and how you move them, there's a mastery level involved and people keep coming back because the next time they play they will be better at it than the time that they were before. What was your training regimen to get here? My training regimen was not to play for 18 years. Well for this, only about two days ago we found out um, what it was going to take to make the qualifying round. 
So um, I tried to squeeze some of that training in, which basically is not burning lines and getting as many Tetrises as you can. This morning I practiced for about an hour and a half and then when I got here they had some stations set up so I got to practice a little bit more, you know, and um, so all in all today I probably got about two hours of practice in before the actual competition. Do you have a pro tip that you can give to the crowd out there just to get them to maybe hit one more level? Um, two tips. Take your mind off the game with whatever you can do. Music is actually really good if you're just kind of hanging out. Um, and another thing, play a lot of level 19. I would say look at your controller. Use both buttons. <laughs> Unlike me. <laughs> Take some video of yourself and uh, play it back and you can keep pausing it and think about where what might have been a better spot for that? Start watching Jonas's videos like I'm going to because that man does the sliding technique like nobody's business. That is absolutely amazing. The other thing I'm going to be looking at is Thor because Thor's fingers, he does the tapping technique where he doesn't actually hold it down to one side or the other. He tap, tap, tap all the way across the board. That's how he's been able to get to level 31 and everything. I started getting good when I figured out that you could start playing on level 19 which is the fastest speed. The game was built to have that harder level for you to kind of swing like a, like a fungo bat in baseball. You swing the heavier bat at level 19 and then when you go lower, everything else just feels easier. So play as much level 19 as possible. We came together tonight and we crowned what, what I think is the, the best Tetris player in the world. The best classic Tetris player in the world. Well on behalf of Girl Gamer, congratulations my friend. Thank you. Enjoy it. Girl Gamer.